weekly sports update. update. All right, how's it going? This is Nick Moody, as always, with Chuck Burgess. This is our 10th weekly sports update, so we're finally at 10. That's double digits, so uh, we've got a long way before we hit the next one, which is triple digits. But So um, we're, we have a, a pretty good one here. We have a bunch of topics we're going to hit. Uh, we're going to do some rapid fire, even. Uh, kind we're of trying a, not to hang too long on any one topic. Cause yeah, we, we've got a lot of them, so there's a, a ton of stuff. There's, there's something that appeals to everybody. That's what we're trying to go for, so... Uh, we'll just get right down to it. Um, we'll yeah. start... Major League Baseball? Yeah, we'll start at Major League Baseball. Okay, first thing. Edwin and Carcion hits two home runs in the same inning. One of them is a grand slam. They were both line shots over, I mean, just barely over the fence. I mean, they were both hammered. Um, how rare and how how awesome is that? <laughs> well, I would think that that's pretty rare. I don't think there's a whole lot of players no. that are hitting two home runs in one inning. No. Um, and... I would even say even more rare because uh, I'm sure one of them is not a grand slam. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know if he's the only one that's ever done that. Probably not. Probably not. It's called, it was but, only the second Blue Jay to ever hit two home runs in the same inning. Yeah. Was, so one, was the other Blue Jay, did he have a grand slam? No. No, yeah. he did not. Right. So, it's, I mean, it's, so that, it's that's a rare, rare thing. And that was an awesome thing. If you haven't seen it, just look it up. I mean, it's 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 pretty cool. Um, Tom Glavin's broken ankle. He, he gets hit hard on the ankle. Um, Losing Ouch. your ace for that long, uh, I mean, what can it do to your team? I mean, what, uh, it, what it can devastate you. It can mm-hmm. devastate you uh, because you you counted on him for X amount of, of wins, mm-hmm. and now mm, those wins are gone. Yeah, I and mean, you, you know you can't guarantee those wins anymore. Oh no, and as, uh, as old as he is, you know you have to kind of wonder also what the Braves are going to do because you know he's not. He's not going to have as speedy as a recovery as he would have yeah. back when he was yeah. younger. So what and then is, the question is: Is he going to heal 100% correct and not yeah. have any, pro- you know, lingering problems? Yeah. And he could. Yeah, because it was uh, an instant snap, and I mean, it, it was it was pretty gnarly. If you haven't seen that one, you need to check that one out as well. Uh, but it, I think it's going to be harder for the Braves. The Braves were on a good winning streak, and I, I think this complicates. Of course, then again, they they just beat the Cardinals two nights in a row. So yeah. I, I don't think I don't know how well it's going to affect them. Yeah. The offense is going to, have to step up, but it, it was definitely pretty gruesome. Um, Next thing we're going to talk about here um, is David Ortiz. He had a temper tantrum yesterday. He did. If you have not seen this, this is this is pretty hilarious. So what he does is he he stepped out of the box and he got a cold strike and got a cold strike. Even though the, the pitch was clearly high, the umpire well, only, it, it, only it was high. Yeah, the only the only reason he called it a strike was because David Ortiz stepped out of the box. You're yeah. talking to school to call it a strike if they do that. So he's upset. Ends up striking out in the at bat. It was a three yeah. zero count. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Goes to the, uh, the the dugout and beats the phone to pieces with his yep. bat. And then, you know, they had the sensor out of his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, how far do you think the pun- do you think the punishment for just throwing him out and he'll have to pay for the equipment? Do you think that's a fair punishment? I, well, I think I think that's the minimum that needs to be done. I mm-hmm. think he definitely needs to pay for the stuff that he broke. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that uh, when you show unsportsmanlike conduct, uh, you should be, you know, run out of the game. Yeah. You know, you're and out for the rest of yeah. the game. And maybe you maybe you should miss one or two just to um, remind you that you're a professional ball player, not a four year old that just struck out in T ball. Okay. See, I'm I'm on both sides because is it unsportsmanlike? Yes, it is. Is it is it right? No, it's not. But it is also hilarious to see stuff like this happen because there's not a lot of there's not a lot of anything special going on in baseball. So when you see people flip out or get into fights, occasionally it is something that mixes well, it up. And, so, and all I'm saying is, is if you do flip out, maybe you need a little bit of time off. You know, <laughs> yeah. Maybe you're too stressed. Well, and it's not like so, uh, it's not like David Ortiz hasn't had a problem with uh, anger in the past, anyway. Uh, okay, so next one we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about Ryan Braun. We'll talk about Ryan just the Braun. Ryan Braun in That's general. Fine. We'll okay. talk. We have a bunch of topics to cover on Ryan Braun because there's been that huge scandal with the PEDs. He's lied to his teammates. He's lied to the fans. Um, I guess we'll just start at the beginning here. Um, how do you feel about the way he handled it, uh, of, of the way it was handled two years ago when he obviously lied about it, and um, now he's admitted to doing well, it? I believe the honesty is best possible. Mm-hmm. However, uh, when you break the rules, you know, just just like a, a bank robber, you're going to lie to cover it up because mm-hmm. you don't want the penalty. Yeah. But you do the crime, you do the time. Yeah. Uh, and that eventually that caught up with him, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, you can only lie so much before you finally get caught. 
and that's what happened, I think. So, so here's the other question. I mean, you know, you see a lot of people, they, they lie to the media, they lie, you know, but like he lied to the, the people who were closest to him. You right, know, he lied right. to family, he lied to best friends, you know. Yep. It, it's, it's, does that make it it's, any worse, or do you think, or do you think that's just, um, you know, I, like, think, I think he had, I think he felt he had to lie to everybody, mm -hmm. because if one person knew, they could leak it. Yeah. And then he knew he'd be in deep trouble. Okay, so here's another question. 2011, there was a very tight race between Matt Kemp and Ryan Braun for MVP. Ryan Braun, Ryan Braun gets MVP. That's also the year that the other big steroid conversion. Now that's been proven he was using, should he get that MVP revoked? Yes. He should? Yeah. Um, he won that under false pretenses. Yeah. I, you know, I just, if he wants to win it on his own merit, all the more power to him. Yeah, but and, to, I, and I don't. Uh, I don't think it should go to anyone else. I think they should just revoke his status because um, I don't think Matt Kemp was the best player in the league. And at this point, I don't know if you can prove that he anything else. But I, I think he should have a revoke. I don't think he should be able to put that on his right. on resume. his trans yeah resume yeah. because I, I think it was you know especially with the line you know had, had he had he come out and said it and said yeah I did it you know but I still worked hard maybe we would have forgave him but now at this point two years later. I think he needs to have it revoked because, it, you know, with all the lies. There, and there needs to be penalties big yeah. time. Yeah. And so the MLB the, is cracking So that the younger players don't try to follow his. Well, look. Well, look what he did. He got MVP and he was juicing. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. I agree completely. And also on that note, um, so Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is a very good friend of Ryan Braun. They have yep. been good friends. And Aaron Rodgers bet a year's salary even that <laughs> he wasn't using and now he is. How does it feel? I mean, this is obviously, we don't know their friendship, but I mean, right. even just your own best friend, if you're lied to like that and you only find out for two years later, I mean, how, I mean, how, I mean, how does that feel? I, well, I would think that would be really hurtful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I would think that if your best friend can't be honest with you and truthful with you, then who can? Exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah, who then, do you know? You then know? who do you start trusting? I mean, you don't trust anybody if you can't trust your best friend. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I don't understand how Ryan, I don't understand how Ryan Braun could look, you know, those people in the eye and honestly say, I honest, never did oh, it. No, I never did I it. Never and then, did, yeah. and then, and then two years know. later say, well, yeah, actually I actually yeah. did. So, and here's the other thing. Um, a Brewers fan uh, wore a jersey that said fraud, covered up the B, said F, you know, brawn, fraud, you know, she just had to change the two letters at the end. She gets threatened to get kicked out by security. Yep. Um, now, all, all, all ballparks have, have rules. Right, right, she did right, not right. violate any of these rules. Um, uh, well, it's interpretation of those rules, but I yeah. I don't think she violated them. No, no, and um, most people don't. Um, right. The only people who seem to do was the, the general manager yeah. and like the yeah. you know the the, the, the staff. Um, um, she did. She meant it as a joke more than yeah. You know, you know, fraud instead of Braun. Well, Braun is a fraud. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, That's my so point. If it wasn't it's true, not yeah, 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 yeah. If it wasn't true, I would understand. Now, if she showed up and it said "homo" on the back or something, you like, know, something yeah, derogatory, derogatory, you know, that's yeah, that's a different that's deal. A different different deal. deal. But, it, but it didn't. It said fraud. And, and as far as we are concerned, he has been proven to, to be, be a, a fraud. fraud. Right. So I don't understand where the problem is. You know, I mean, if I it also if you if you showed up with one that said "white Caucasian" on the back of it underneath "brawn," well, are you going to get in trouble for that one too? I mean, he is white and Caucasian. So I mean, I just don't understand. If if it is, if it's been proven to be true, and if it's not slanderous or you know derogatory, I don't understand what the problem is. Um, you know, I feel like I could wear my you know. I mean, what if her last name was Fraud? <laughs> you know, I mean, they don't. You don't know. You don't know. I'm not saying it was, but like you know, if your last name was Fraud and you changed it, I mean, they wouldn't know that. And then all of a sudden, you've got. I just think it was a stupid decision. Let, let her wear what stupid she, decision. You know. He's going a little too far with it. it it's stupid decision. Yeah. Well. Uh, I just one, I love family. America and I love our freedoms, you know. Oh yeah, love our freedoms. Um, Let's so, go on to the NFL. Yeah, NFL, good stuff. It's coming up. It's coming up. Uh, first thing we'll say, Adrian Peterson. Okay, Adrian, Adrian Peterson, Peterson says players are using HGH. They are using. Yep. I know. I've seen it. I don't. You're free to test me. I'm all natural. Um, I guess first of all, let's start off. Uh, do you do you believe Adrian? Do you think he's bluffing or, or do you? Um, I don't know. I think the guy has been given. God-given talent, I, you know. I think the good Lord above blessed yeah. that man <laughs> it was multiple times. Black, black Jesus, <laughs> and uh, he just is just so phenomenal. Um, he's saying, "Test me, test me, test me." Yeah. Um, and and I would say that's fine, 
But if they test him, they need to test everybody. Yeah. Um, and anybody on it, uh, kick them out. Whatever. Yeah. Well, and, but I just yeah. I just don't see it on, on no, Adrian. I, no, I, I think you know, I think he's, he's better than that. I, I, I think, think he cares about his body too much. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, and the other thing is, Adrian's not the kind of guy that wants to hurt anybody. Like even going back to Braun, you know, Braun got that FedEx guy fired. You know, that FedEx guy lost his job because Braun blamed him. And I just don't. I and just it was don't, a lie. It was, it a, was lie. a lie. Yeah. So I don't see Adrian Peterson uh, even putting himself in a position where he'd have no. to do something like that. So I, I just don't believe it. I don't. I don't. I don't think Adrian would say that unless. You know, it was true he right. wasn't using. Right. Um, I know, play, of course, players are. Um, out of all the positions, I would say running back would probably be a position that you don't need to use that drug as much just because you know, speed-wise. Right. You know, uh, that's more of a muscle bulk up, you know, get a defensive right. lineman. But either way, I mean, it, it doesn't need to be done by anybody. No. You know, if you want muscles, build it up. Right. Um, the hard so way. if they do decide to test these, um, what, what do you think is going <laughs> to happen to the NFL? <laughs> Well, I, I, I don't know. Um, I think there'd be a lot of suspensions. Yeah. Well, well should they be? If they, if they decide to, to do this, I mean, should they should they wait like a year and say, okay, in a year we're going to start testing no. that way everyone? No. It's against the rules. It's against, you know they know that it's against the rules. Um, if they wanted to just start spot checking and actually pulling names out of a hat to do that, I would have no problem with that either. <laughs> well, you yeah. guys need to be following the rules. You're making millions of dollars a year. And you have a very select full to uh, follow full the list. rules. Yeah. If they want, if they want to go that way with it uh, and just immediately start testing for it, I would understand. Um, of course, there would probably be a lot of appeals, and they would probably win those appeals. But you know, at least it would get the point across. Uh, and all these rookies that are coming in wouldn't be using. That's Especially true. if you know, if they know, test every rookie. Every rookie, when you yeah. come in, you're tested. You test positive. Sorry, you'll wait one year to play. You know, I just that, that's pretty harsh. <laughs> well, considering there's only a four game suspension for well, for you know, it. four uh, games may not be enough. Maybe that's why everybody's still doing them. That's a fourth of the season. Well, but well, that's what I'm saying. But people are still violating. Yeah, a lot of people are still violating. Well, even if the suspension was, you know, two years, people would still do it. I mean, they're, they're going not, to as, do many. It. not, not as, as many. Not as many. When you get suspended two years without pay, when you lose fourteen million dollars. I mean, just like bounty juicing? scandals. People know bounty scandals, you know, and they still do it. Anyway, anyway. Um, on to the next one. Okay, there was there was two incidents that happened yesterday. Yeah. Jeremy Macklin for the Eagles tears his ACL in practice, and PETA for uh, the Ravens tied in. He has a hip injury, and he'll be out for a long time as well yeah, on the injury reserve. He's going to have surgery, um, it looks like, on his hip. So, so. Here, here's my question is, and everyone's really concerned about RG3 in this uh, sense, too. Are these... If practice is hurting your players this bad, is that because they're practicing too hard, or do they need to tone it back, or what? What's the key um, I, there? I, I don't know. I don't know if they're if they're you know still cold and not quite stretched out enough, or I, I don't know. Um, my my. I, thing, I don't know what the situation is, but it it sucks to start losing players in you know you haven't even got to the preseason game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, that's and that's my thing. If you if you hurt yourself during game. Because you're trying, you know. Okay, that's going to happen. It's football. You know, injuries do happen. But if you injure yourself because during practice, you know, you just had to get a little further than that D back. Yeah. Wh what are you doing? You know, I I don't know if that's for sure what happened. I I wasn't there. But my point is, you have to be really careful because, you know. Well, and by the same token, though, some of these players are playing for their livelihood. That's you know, true. There's well, all but, these battles well, going on. But Jeremy on. Macklin wasn't. He is a starter. No. He has been no. a starter for many years. He knows he has some yeah. pretty decent job security. So, so in that sense, no. And I mean, Peta, Peta was supposed to start too. So I mean, you know, and I can understand that yeah. from rookies. I, I understand. But when you get starting star players, I mean, ha this happening too, you know. And even Percy Harvin's injured right now. I know that wasn't because of anything in practice, but right. you know, when you got that, that really hurt. When you, when you're, when you're it, star players. Sorry, yeah. When your star players get injured before the season even starts, well, I mean, a lot of fans are like, why even watch? We know our season's done. You know, it's like when Danny Amendola got hurt the first game two years ago. I, I knew our season was over because he was the only receiver who could catch. And, I mean, it was pretty much. He was out for the entire year, and we had a 2-14 and 14 record. That's how it is. So you have to be really careful about what, what goes on there. So yeah. I, hope, I hope players aren't, you know, trying so hard during practice. I hope, I hope that it quits. Um, next topic is uh, we're talking about Tim Tebow. I haven't heard his name in a while. Yeah. We got a couple, a uh, couple topics on him. Real the, quick. Yep. The first one is he he came out in the media about Aaron Hernandez and he handled it really well. 
Um, I, actually, he didn't come out in the media. He was talking to the media. <laughs> he was just yeah. doing his media thing, and yeah. they began to ask him, well, uh, what about Aaron Hernandez? Yeah. And he handled it like a pro. Yeah. yeah. Um, very, very... I was impressed. I yeah, was really yeah, impressed. yeah. He, he handled it really well. I think the benefit of having someone who could handle the media well is, um, you know, you can teach, you can teach the game, but I don't think that's really something that can be taught. Um, I, I don't think not, you can, not to the extent that he is. No, no, that's no, something that's, no. I don't think that you know handling the media being that good of a person. I think that's just in you. I, yeah, I don't think you. Yeah, you have, I agree. So that's that's the benefit of having there. But now, see, that's the other thing is, if you're thinking, well, he's third string quarterback, why is it going to matter anyway? Well, that's our next topic. They're saying he might play tight end because both tight ends are out. Uh, they want to use him for something. And at, this point, great hands. and at this point, I say, why not? Because obviously he's never going to play quarterback for that team, uh, being behind two star quarterbacks who, you know, one of them's Tom Brady, the other one they think has a very bright future as soon as Tom Brady leaves. So obviously he's never going to get a quarterback there. So why not? You know, if you're going to sign him, play him somewhere else. I'm sure Bill Belichick had that from the beginning. Yeah, had Otherwise, idea of what he was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, if you want to try him out there, why not? It's going to be preseason. Even if he gets hurt, it doesn't, like we said, it doesn't matter. He's not supposed to be playing quarterback anyway. So, I mean, give him a try. Why not? I, that's, I mean, that, why not? That, that's my yeah. answer is why not. <laughs> you know, what do, what do you have to lose? You know? Since you mentioned Belichick, uh, let's do the uh, Belichick signing Hernandez. Okay, yeah. Um, Patriots, yeah. When Bill Belichick signed Aaron Hernandez, they came out recently and they asked Bill Belichick, they said, well, when you when you signed him, you knew that he had all these problems. You knew he was in violent. In college, he had been in Yeah, in college, he's trouble. been in plenty of trouble. You know, fact, why? Like even in high school, he might have been. You know, and they said, why are you so surprised that this went down? And, and Bill Belichick said, look, I signed him believing in the Patriot way. Which is, you know, you know, you you become a patriot, and you can, you know, you, you just you turn all that around. You know, and they've done it. They've done it with Moss. They've done it with a bunch of other but different they, players, yeah. and it has worked. But I guess my question is, did he did he put too much on the patriot way and not do enough himself, or what? I I don't think I don't think this is on Belichick at all. It's on Hernandez. Yeah. You know, he. Um, well, yeah, Hernandez he did makes what his own did, decisions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think way, I think Belichick. I think uh, him believing in the Patriot way and believing that once you come to his team, um, you're going to act a certain way, I think that's noble of him. Yeah, so, um, well, okay, so here's my question then. I mean, obviously, I, okay, let's go to this. Bill Belichick says he's shocked. He just can't believe this would happen. Right. So do you think there's a mistake there, though, by Belichick? Yes. Assuming that, yes. that, that this, you know, he yes, shouldn't be surprised. This, he yeah, should no, not be, you know. Not, well, I mean, to a certain extent, you're going to be surprised at any murder. Yeah, but, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, but, but the but fact the that, fact he's that it's trouble. Aaron Hernandez, yeah. I, no. Because, that's, because to me, that's like if we just saw a Randy Moss interview and he was snippy toward the media, and I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> Randy did Moss you see how he reacted? The media? Yeah, it's yeah. like, duh, you know, I mean, that's it's, who he is. So That's kind of a, uh, uh, yeah, we knew that was going to happen. Yeah, so, um, Belichick's a great coach. He's one of the best ever, so I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe it was a reality check for him. I mean, maybe, you know, because he's been yeah. doing it for a long time. Maybe, it, you know, quick reality yeah, maybe, check. Bam. Maybe it'll be a little less to believe, I don't know, in just the Patriot way. Maybe yeah. He'll, he'll look more yeah. Get back to cracking that whip. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try to make sure he's pulling players that he really wants. So. Okay. Um, RG3 lying about his injuries. Okay, so Robert Griffin III has been lying about his injuries. Um, Not a good thing. He lied last year about his injuries. That's one of the reasons he got hurt. He's lying this year about his injuries. They don't know. They can't tell for sure. You know what? You know when your coach says, "You know what? We're just not going to play you because we don't know what you're, yeah, whether you're hurting or not. So we're going to leave you out of all the preseason games because you won't tell us, and we can't tell without you talking to us." Oh, I know. I'm fine, coach. I'm fine. Well, that's what you said last year. Yeah. And you were hurting. And what happened? You blew your knee out. Yeah, and I mean, and the Redskins are trying to play this off like, well, no, we just want to make sure he doesn't get hurt. Right. We don't, but that, that's bullcrap. We know it's, it's because they don't know how his knee is. They don't want to risk his knee because he won't tell them about his knee, and, and that's just not right. You've got to be honest with your coaches, otherwise, you're not going to have a career. A career. You're going to you're going to you know, blow that. out both your good. knees and your arms, and, and you're not going to be able to do anything. You're a vegetable. You know, talk to those people. They're, you know, you're not going to lose your starting position because you're hurt. Yeah. After all the money they paid you, and as high as you are ranked, do you really think that if you say, hey, I need a couple games to you know, rest my knee, you really think they're just going to replace you? I mean, I know it has happened, but it's not going to happen to RG3. Yeah. Not after everything they paid for to get him. Yeah. Um, so, quit doing it. <laughs> Rex Ryan. Rex Ryan. Is he on the hot seat? Coach for the Jets. Um, 
I think it's time to put up or shut up. I think he's going to have to, uh, if, if he doesn't have a showing this year, uh, I'd say his job could be in jeopardy. Very professional. I'm going to go the other, I'm going to go the non-professional way with it and say the Jets have sucked ass. They do suck ass. And if they, if they continue to suck ass this year, Rex Ryan's gone. Because there's no point. He should have been fired last year, in my opinion, because they, they completely you know did the general manager. They fired him. They got a new quarterback. They're trying to rebuild. And, and uh, we've talked about it on our show. I thought you know in order to rebuild, they should have you know got rid of Rex Ryan. They haven't. If this year he still doesn't get above at least an 8-8 eight eight record, yeah. he's gone. I, there, there's no I reason to keep him. There's no reason to keep him. And I, I, I agree. Yep. You clean house. The only thing you haven't cleaned is coach. Yep. If, if it doesn't get done this time. You probably both need to change the scenery, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, all right, so now. we got basically two, one big topic and one little one. Okay, so okay, so we'll do that. We'll do the NCAA real quick. So okay. the, the NCAA, they have some great games. NCAA fourteen recently right. came out. They're not going to do it anymore. The no. uh, NCAA said, "Screw you, EA. We do not want to sign." EA these. Sports was the company that did the uh, the games. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the Madden and and. Uh, and NCAA 14 and yeah. 13 and 12 and so, and so on and so forth. They had a 21 year was it 21 year 21 contract? year deal and it contract? finally ran out. They it did finally not, ran out and they did not um, renew. So I mean I don't and I don't want to talk about why the NCAA didn't do it because you know only God knows because yeah. I mean NCAA has some dumb reasons for doing a lot of stuff. Right. But how about this? How's it going to affect the games? It's going to hurt. EA. It's going to hurt bad. It's going to hurt EA it because is. I think a lot of the people. Um, play the games because they want to play their favorite college Absolutely. team. And if you all of a sudden don't have your favorite college team on there, you know, it's uh, the Michigan Wombats or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, it's just, it's not the same. And I, I can give it from a standpoint, I work in retail, I work at Best Buy. As soon as I heard about this, the first thing I did was I asked five people who brought the game up to me and sell it. Because the game had just come out when I heard about it. And I asked five people, you know, random people. And I said, you know, hey, did you hear about this? I told them what happened. I said, you know, hey, how does that make you feel? All five of them were pissed. All five of them were extremely pissed. Four of them said they would not be purchasing it if it wasn't licensed by the NCAA. And then the next one, the fifth guy, said he might purchase it. He doesn't know. He'd have to see what the reviews were. So, I mean, it, it, when you're talking about Madden and you're talking about NCAA, I mean, I know when it comes to Madden, I, I, I don't give... A damn what the ratings are. I don't care what no. you know. They, we just buy it. But, we love it. But and if it was, didn't have the NFL on it, it would be if a it lot was harder. The CFL, I, we wouldn't play. I don't think I'd play. Mm -hmm. I, I just, it's not the same. It's it's not. It's not the you same. Know, it's, so it's the teams gonna, that we love. Yep. You know. So it's it's and it's hard to relate. You know, it's hard to relate. You know, to the stuff you see on TV if you don't. So it, it is going to hurt them. You're right. It's going to hurt them. So right. let's talk about, let's do some uh, rapid fire yep. on positions that they're really battling out in the NFL. Uh, we'll start with running backs. There are several teams that are battling out uh, for the running back position, uh, like the Giants. They have, well, they actually have five running backs on their yeah, uh, like roster. Uh, Ryan Terrain is, is probably uh, one of the bigger names that's fighting it out. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure who would be second there. I mean, in all honesty, that, that's an all-out battle. I, I, Darryl, Michael Cox is the only rookie. I, I think um, Giants is going to come down to preseason, to be honest with you, because at this point we don't know. Yeah. I mean, it, it could be anyone. With all these rookies, you never know who's going to show up. It could be anyone. Uh, Cardinals, Ryan Williams versus Rashawn Mendenhall. So these are the two ones we think. I'm going to go with Ryan Williams if he can stay healthy. If he can stay healthy. That's the key thing. Yeah. It's good to have Rashard Mendenhall as that backup. backup. And he's but, great for, you know, especially short yardage or goal line. Absolutely. Big, but I having think, a big yep. back like that push through the line. But I definitely think that uh, Ryan Williams should get the starting job if he can stay healthy. So I think I think that's that's where that'll go. Uh, next the Rams. One, Rams. All right. Now Zach P, Zach Stacy, and Daryl Richardson. I know this one. Now, you've got Zach Stacy, the rookie. Um, I think it's going to be Daryl Richardson. He was a rookie last year, and he ran for 4.6 yards a carry or something like that. He he had over 100 yeah, touches. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive pretty for impressive. a seventh-round pick. I can't imagine why they would go with anyone else unless for some reason he just doesn't show up and someone outperforms him. But right. it, it, I think it's going to be Daryl Richardson. But it's not a guarantee. I guarantee you. The it's only guarantee 90%. is that I think it's going to be a battle in the preseason. And I think whoever shows what they've got in the preseason will be the one that they pick. Uh, Packers. 
Packers. Uh, you know, you have James Starks, who's proven he's a big power back. Uh, then you have Eddie Lacy. Uh, you 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 signed Eddie Ray Lacy. I, I'd give him the start just because he's a rookie and I think he's shown a lot of potential. Um, he's good on third downs. He he's got power. He can get you the first downs. That's really all the Packers are going to need him for anyway. I don't feel like they're going to need someone to run long distance. Let's um, have Aaron Rodgers again. Preseason will tell, but I I, I don't disagree with Nick. Yeah, because I mean James Starks. I mean James Starks, you know, has has got a, quite a bit of seasoning on him, so he's pretty, you know. Yeah. And I I think at this point, if you're going to go, you know, big and draft Eddie Lacy, a guy who was supposed to go in the first round, right. you know, you're right. obviously wanting you know a long term commitment there. So that's probably where they'll go. Carolina Panthers. Uh, the, the same. Bob yeah, you know, this one is kind of Angela Williams and uh, Jonathan Stewart. This they kind of split the carries yeah, last yeah. year. It's Trey Jonathan question. Stewart's injured quite a bit. Um, or seems to be. So, I don't know. That's kind of a trick question. They're going to split it both, yeah, down the middle, <laughs> like they always do. They have the last three or four years. So that's probably what they'll do. So, uh, it's going it's to be a risky fantasy pick either way. So, uh, yeah, because you're going to yeah. have halfway to shoot. Yeah. Uh, Broncos, Monty Ball and Nelson Moreno. Uh, if Monty Ball turns out to be what they expect him to be, um, I would say he'll get the start there pretty easily over Nelson. Uh, there are other guys there trying to... Yeah, these are the main two, though. Uh, I'm going to go with Monty Ball. I, I, I like what I see from him. And plus, no, Sean Marino just wasn't what they expected him to be. He hasn't been. He's had a couple of years to prove it. Um, so at this point, I think that I think that they're going to give Monty Ball the star right out of the gate. And I think the only way he gets replaced is if he just doesn't perform. But or, I, I just or don't injuries, see that yeah. Or injuries, yeah. yeah. So, but no, Sean's a great backup to have. But I, oh, yeah. I, I do see yeah. him as a backup. Um uh, let's move to quarterbacks. All right, four quarterback. teams in quarterbacks. Yep. Uh, the Jets. Uh, Mark Sanchez versus Geno Smith. Who you got? Um, I don't know. I think both of them have bad attitudes. <laughs> um, I hope, I hope that they actually make them play for the position. I think they'll give it to Mark Sanchez and tell Geno, "Well, we're going to bring you along." Um, I hope that's not what they do, but. Because I'm gonna go if with, Mark Sanchez wins the position, give it to him. I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree with what he said. I think that's what they'll do. I, I'm I'm gonna go the other direction and say I think you need to start Geno Smith because Sanchez has had th four years in the league now. This will be his fifth. Yep. He has never thrown 60 percent completion. I think the highest he's ever been is about 57. Uh, his most yards, his yards go up and down, but he's never, he's barely ever broke 3,500 yards. He he just doesn't seem to do it, even if he's healthy the entire year. Um, at this point, if you're the Jets, what do you have to lose? You know, you've never been able to go anywhere with him anyway. So, I mean, what are you going to thaw out of last place if you put Geno in there? So, as far Good as point. I'm concerned, put Geno in there. And I mean, if he doesn't perform, you always have Sanchez to go back to. But I mean, again, what do you have to lose? Sanchez has proven that he cannot be an elite quarterback, at least not with the weapons he has right now. Right. So, let's go to the Bills. EJ Manuel and Kevin Cole. I, again, I, I I go with the rookie because I mean, again, what do you have to lose? Kevin agree. Kevin Kevin Cobb hasn't yeah. proved anything anywhere. And, and you can always fall back on Cobb. And you can always fall back on him if you need yeah. to. If but Emmanuel doesn't you, perform. First round draft pick. I mean, first round draft pick. How, how can you right. not start him? How can right. you draft him 16th overall and not expect to even even start him? Especially as much of a reach as it was. Right. You know, I, I just don't see right. it. You know, you got to start him. Uh, Jags, Chad Henney and Blaine Gabbert. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what you got to choose move, from. Move, I'm sorry. Move to Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, I, I don't see the Jags having a real great year either way. So yeah, you know, if I have to choose either one of those, I guess it'd be Chad Henney, just because Chad Henney at least occasionally has a good game. I I just haven't liked what I've seen. You know, it is it's tough because Blaine Gabbert's from Missouri. I love Missouri boys, but I. I just haven't seen anything where I'm like, oh, wow, you know, that was a good play. Maybe this guy has potential. I, I've just seen either him hitting the ground or him throwing it, and there's not even a Jaguars receiver in the area, and the team picks it off. I, mean, I don't know if it's quite that bad, but <laughs> when, it's, when it's defender, close. When it's a defender, close. When a defender picks you off like this, that, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign because he's like, oh, crap, I'm out of the <laughs> – so. And then let's go to the three-way battle with the Eagles. Um, Michael Vick, Nick Foles, and Matt Barkley. Well, you know, in my opinion, this should be a performance-based. I think what they're going to do is they're going to put Michael Vick at the top and say he's our starter unless Nick Foles or Matt Barkley can step up and prove that they deserve the job more. And what I think what they should do is say, look, all three of you, you're fighting it out for the job. 
made the best man. Well, and here's the problem: is Michael Vick has a six-year, hundred and five million dollar contract. Right. Yeah. So, so how do you not start? How do you not start that? that much money? So I mean, I mean, the key is if someone else wins it, you need to get rid of Vick. You can't hold yeah. on to him. There, right. There's no backup worth that much. No. Um, so I mean, Michael yeah. Vick not only is playing for his starting position. So that's good news for the Jags. Jags, Michael <laughs> Vick could possibly be available. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he would definitely be an upgrade from what you've got. Yeah. So, I mean, I think Michael Vick's just getting you know to the point where he's old enough to where him trying to make a play every play that isn't going to work, and he's going to keep getting injured. I just don't see it. And I mean, it's good that you have some backups there, but I, I think you know, in, all, in my opinion, I hope either Nick Foles or Matt Barkley gets it. And in between those two, I don't, I don't care who it is. I, I just hope one of them gets it because I think Michael Vick has had his chance to prove what he can do, and yet the Eagles haven't. You know, they're supposed to have the dream team a couple years ago, and then they, they didn't even right. break eight and eight. Right. Uh, I think that's a lot on them. So I don't know. The guess, preseason will be all telling. We got preseason coming up in a matter of two weeks, so it's almost football. Time. August eighth is when the preseason starts to believe. It's August eighth, and then I believe the regular season starts September eighth. Hall of Fame games the fourth, so you can watch the Hall of Fame game. That's always fun. 